Hello everyone, this is Deepak Singhal. Welcome you all to the channel of Vidya Guru. So guys, if you are listening to me for the first time and this is your first video, then please, it is just my humble request that if you like my video uh, throughout the end of the session, then it is just a humble request to kindly subscribe it. I'm not asking for any kind of a super thanks, but it is just a kind of a, a you know, a, a good gesture from your side. If you like it, share it with your friends and also subscribe the channel. It actually motivates me to make such videos and bring these videos before you guys. So before we go and start the first edition of the June month, let me tell you about that what all I'm going to cover in this video. For example, I'm going to cover the index from Niti Ayo, which is the health index report of the COVID year in which Kerala has stopped, followed by Tamil Nadu. Chennai Super Kings lifted their fifth title for the IPL. The new parliament building inauguration the central government plan to create strategic petroleum reserves in the salt caves, uh, the patch reporting app launched to make the roads in the state free of potholes, and the highest honor which has been given to Prime Minister Modi uh, while he visited uh, Hiroshima for attending the G7 summit. After that, he left for Papua New Guinea and attending the FIPIC Nations Meet. So let's start the session. The very first current affair brings you <clears throat> about the health index report, uh, which has been brought by Niti Aayog. This report has been brought by uh, Niti Aayog, the most important report. And uh, this report generally, uh, you know, uh, it generally evaluates the states on the basis of how better they, uh, how better they cope the problem of COVID. And in that report, Kerala uh, has stopped, followed by Tamil Nadu. Uh, means these are the best performing states among the larger states. And uh, however, uh, among the smaller states, the Tripura has ranked the highest, while among the union territories, that uh, the capital of India, Delhi, is at the bottomest level. So something about uh, Niti Ayo, this is how the report was published. So it is just about the arrangements of the state when they were uh, settling, when they were coping the problem of COVID-19 in their respective states. Uh, the National Institution for Transforming India, it was actually brought in in order to replace the earlier uh, organization called Planning Commission. And we all know that uh, all the five-year plans in India, they used to be uh, implemented by this commission. But now the National Institution for Transforming India, which has replaced Planning Commission, uh, it has become a national think tank, a kind of a think tank where the state are, uh, I would say, where the states are offered some kind of uh, position in order to, uh, you know, showcase what they actually want. So it is a good step as far as the cooperative federalism in the state is concerned. So this institution was formed on 1st of January 2015, headquarters, it is in New Delhi. Narendra Modi is a chairman, means normally the Prime Minister of India is the chairman, just like the Planning Commission. And Suman Barry is the vice chairman, where, uh, whereas BBR Subramaniam is the CEO of this organization. Heading forward to next current affair, and it is good. You know, it is something to feel proud of. So these two Havaldars, or I would say these two soldiers were working for UN peacekeeping. So these two brave individuals sacrificed their lives in the UN peacekeeping mission uh, in July 2022, when they were serving on duty with the rebels in Congo. Uh, among them, we had the head constable Shishupal Singh of the BSF, who hailed from Sikar, Rajasthan. And the next one is Sanwarwala Ram, sorry, Sanwala Ram, Sanwala Ram Vishnoi from Barmer, Rajasthan. So the United Nations awarded the DAG Hammerskold Medal on the occasion of International Day of United Nations Peacekeepers on 29th May. However, the award has been received by Ruchira Kamboj, who is the India's permanent representative to United Nations. She received the medal on the behalf of both these constables. The award was presented by United Nations Security, sorry, uh, Secretary General Antonio Guterres. Heading forward to next important current. It is about guys, Vigilance Commissioner. I'm talking about Praveen Kumar Shivasta. Uh, now he has been appointed uh, as the Central Vigilance Commissioner. You, you can see uh, this image where our Prime Minister, President, Honorable President, and Honorable Vice President of India were present, along with 
the Central Vigilance Commissioner. Actually, the Central Vigilance Commissioner, guys, is directly responsible to the Indian Parliament. So his direct accountability is only to the Indian Parliament. Something about the Vigilance uh, Commissioner, then Shivasta was serving as uh, acting Central Vigilance Commissioner since December last year, after the completion of Suresh and Patel tenure as the Central Vigilance Commissioner. And I have already, uh, you know, explained about it, that it is an independent body whose accountability is only to the Parliament of India. Uh, so who finalized the appointments? Of course, uh, my dear. Uh, so these Central Vigilance Commissioner or Vigilance Commissioners are appointed by Honorable President of India on the recommendations of the committee, which consists of Prime Minister as the Chairman, Home Minister as the member, and the Leader of Opposition in Lok Sabha as the member. So generally, the tenure for these commissioners is for four years or 65 years of his, whichever is earlier. This office was established in 1964 under the Central Vigilance Commission Act 2003 is the most important, uh, I would say, act pertains to this office. And uh, this uh, office submits its report to the President of India, but the direct accountability is to the Parliament of India. This is important. Heading forward to next important current affair, and it is a good step as far as the carbon dioxide emission from the aviation sector is concerned. So French government has recently banned the domestic flights uh, on those routes where or which can be covered by the train and is less than two and a half hours. So if the journey is less than two and a half hours, so two and a half hours is the benchmark, then there will be no flights for that because this minimum distance can be easily covered by train. It is expected to minimize the emission from the aviation sector through the provision had been included in a 2021 climate law and was already in use. But the ban has been imposed just now. It is a good, good step as far as countering the carbon emissions in the state is concerned. Heading forward to next current affair, guys. So Eravat, Eravat, which is a supercomputer, has been ranked at 75th position at the top 500 global computing test. See, dear, in this computer, for example, sorry, uh, first of all, what is Aravat? It is an uh, artificial intelligence supercomputer in the Center for Development of Advanced Computing called CDAC Pune. So it is India's largest and the fastest AI supercomputing system. And in order to tell that uh, what is the speed of your computer? We generally use the word teraflops. So what is one teraflop? If the question is asking, uh, sorry, is asked. One teraflop is, uh, is actually equal to uh, like performing one trillion when the computer perform one trillion, one trillion floating 1 trillion floating point operation one trillion floating point operation in one second so this kind of a speed is called teraflop and here it is 13170 teraflop and under this it was ranked at 75th position in the world by the 61st edition of the top 500 global supercomputing list. The supercomputer has been installed this year only. And this is uh, the whole data of all the supercomputers, especially you have the top eight supercomputers here. Heading forward to next current affair. It is about Chennai Super Kings guys who won uh, their fifth IPL trophy. Uh, they beat, uh, uh, means the last match which they played was in Narendra Modi Stadium, Ahmedabad. Uh, their match was against the Gujarat Titans who lost with, uh, sorry, who lost by four wickets in the 20 over game. They scored 214 runs, but because of heavy rainfall, the match started after, uh, I would say, 12.30. The Chennai Super Kings, uh, they scored 171 runs because of the rainfall. Uh, the 20 over match was decided, or I would say it was decreased to 15 overs, and their target was to score 171 runs. And they did it in just 15 overs with a loss of five wickets. The final match took place at Narendra Modi Stadium in Ahmedabad. And with this, the Chennai Super Kings, under the captaincy of 
the legend uh, Mahindra Singh Dhoni lifted their fifth trophy. However, uh, during this match, as, as you can see this player, Ambati Raidu, uh, he announced his retirement also. So it was his last match. So these are all the winners of IPL trophy, like the Chennai Super Kings and Mumbai uh, Indians. They have won the trophy five, five times. Kolkata Knight Riders won it twice. Sunrisers Hy Hyderabad, uh, Rajasthan Royals, Deccan Chargers, and Gujarat Titans. All of them, they won it just once. And here we have Shubman Gill, who has received the orange cap because he has scored 890 runs, the maximum in 17 matches. Although, from the same team, we have uh, Mohammad Shami, who has taken the maximum number of wickets, that is 28 wickets in 16 matches, and has received the purple cap. Heading forward to next important current affair, it is about Red Bull's Max Verstappen, who has won the 2023 Monaco Grand Prix Award, which is located in the Northwestern Europe. Capital is Amsterdam. I'm talking about Netherlands. Official language is Dutch. Emperor is William Alexander. And the Prime Minister is Mark Ruth. These are all the Grand Prix like the Bahrain, Saudi Arabian, Australian, Azerbaijan, Miami. And these are all the winners which you need. Heading forward to next current affair. The next current affair is about Damodar Maujo, who has been honored with the 57th Gyan Peet Award. So, my dear, it is the highest literary honor. And uh, if I want to tell you something about Mr. Damodar, then he's a renowned short story writer, novelist, critic, and a skin writer in the Konkani language. My dear, the Konkani language, it is the language which is generally spoken in the parts of Goa. So, Mr. Damodar is the second Goan to receive this uh, Gyan Peet Award. Uh, after Ravindra Kelkar in 2008 from Goa. Uh, Mauzo's famous novel is Kremlin, uh, which has received Sahitya Academy Award in 1983. Sorry, Kermelin. Kermelin. And then we have uh, something about the Gyanpeet Award. So the first award was actually given on 19th of November 1966 to JK. I'm sorry, Mr. GK uh, Shankar Kurup. And the award was established only in the year 1961. It is not given after that. So, uh, Aastha Purna Devi uh, became the first woman recipient in 1976 for this award. She has written the novel, uh, uh, The First Promise, uh, uh, which, which means, means the original title of the novel was Prothom uh, Prothi Shruti. Prothom Prothi Shruti. Then we have the next uh, current affair about Prime Minister Narendra Modi, who inaugurated the new parliament building on 28th of May, 2023. So it is a magnificent building. Its beauty is unparalleled. However, the inauguration of the Temple of Democracy took place without opposition and also without the president. Actually, without the president was the most important uh, uh, thing because of which in the first phase, 19 opposition party they registered their like uh, they, they they registered their view that uh, these opposition parties will not be participating in the new parliament building inauguration because what the opposition parties were demanding the opposition parties were demanding that the new parliament building should be inaugurated by the newly elected president of india uh, madam president uh, honorable draupadi murmu the most important thing was that when she stood for the election, means she was the NDA candidate, when she stood for the election, these 19 opposition parties never voted uh, in favor of these opposition, sorry, in favor of uh, Madam President Draupadi Murmu. The most important problem was, uh, see, uh, in India, we only speak about corporative federalism, but when, whenever it uh, comes to uh, working in line with the opposition party, the ruling and opposition party, they actually have a two different stands always. Even if you take the example of, uh, you know, Goa, even if you take the example, sorry, not Goa, uh, of Delhi, even if you take the example of Rajasthan and now Karnataka and even Himachal Pradesh, West Bengal. So the new parliament building, the foundation stone was laid by Prime Minister Modi on 10th of December 2020. And within the record time of two years with more than 60,000 workers, now the parliament building is uh, fully furnished and it is now inaugurated. The inauguration was done by Prime Minister Modi in the year 2023 on 28th of May. A multi-faith assembly was also organized 
during the inauguration ceremony. And the most important thing which was in news when this inauguration was being done was the Sengol. Sengol, which is a kind of a power stick for justice and, uh, you know, for a good empire. Uh, it was started, that, that the uh, tradition of Sengol in India starts from the Chola dynasty. This is the new parliament building, which is triangular in shape, just in front of the old parliament building, which is now 100 years old, means almost. It was inaugurated by then Viceroy of India, Lord Irwin. What is the cost of the new parliament building? Then, my dear, the initial contract was awarded to Tata Projects for 861.9 crore rupees, but the cost eventually increased to 971 crore rupees by the time the project commenced. The architect of the new parliament building was, sorry, is Vimal Patel. Yes, this is uh, Mr. Vimal Patel. Whereas the old parliament building was designed by Edward Lutyens and Herbert Baker. So you have two architects here, Mr. Edward Lutyens and Mr. Herbert Baker. The construction of the building has been done by the Tata Projects Company. So this is the new parliament building. Some of the interesting facts that the present strength for the Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha is much larger than uh, which was there in the old parliament building. The most important thing apart from this is that uh, uh, like uh, the theme, like uh, you have the theme of the national you know, flower uh, lotus in Rajya Sabha and the peacock theme is there in Lok Sabha. So their names are Gyan Dwar, Shakti Dwar and Karma Dwar. There are 12 gates in the old parliament building. Their names are from 12 from gate number one. Then we have Sri Ram Charitramanas became the longest song in the world, created a Guinness world record by singing uh, uh, Sri Ram Charitramanas for 138 hours, 41 minutes and two seconds. And who created this uh, Sorry, record? Then we have Mr. Jagdish Pillai of Varanasi. He has created this uh, you know, tremendous record. The achievement made Sri Ram Charitramanas the longest song in the world. The entire process of recording editing and mixing took around four years, uh, 63 days, 295 hours to complete. The previous record for the longest song was held by UK Mark Christopher Lee uh, and the Pocket Gods on December 1, 2021 with a duration of 115 hours and 45 minutes. So this is <clears throat> Mr. Jagdish Pillai receiving the Guinness Book of World Record for singing Ram Charitamanis. Then we have Khelo India University Games 2022, uh, which is being organized in 2023 in Uttar Pradesh. The inaugural ceremony has already taken place in Lucknow on 25th of May. More than 4,000 athletes from 207 universities across the country, they are going to participate uh, in this university games. The university games will span over a period of 12 days. This is, uh, you know, the poster for Hello India, University Games. Uh, the mascot is Jitu Barasinga. Yes, this is Jitu Barasinga, the mascot, which you can see on the left side. The anthem is Hello India, Har Dil Me Desh, which is, sing, uh, sorry, which is sung by Mr. Palash Sain. Though we have already covered this in the month of May, I think in third or second video, I have covered the mascot and the anthem. The death anniversary of India's first Prime Minister, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, who passed away on 27th of May 1964. He was born on 14th November 1889. Panditji took charge of the country during a time when India was grappling with the issues like famine, poverty, illiteracy. Nehru is praised for his role in the reconstruction of India and yes, something about the foreign policy, that is Panchi. This is Prime Minister, uh, our first Prime Minister, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru. Uh, in 1955, Pandit Nehru was honored with the India's highest civilian award. He was also considered the prominent voice of developing nations. Then we have the next current affair about central government, which plans to create strategic petroleum reserves in the salt caves. Uh, India, see my dear, uh, India is going to create some strategic petroleum reserves similar to United States of America. There are salt deposits beneath the ground in some areas of Rajasthan where these petroleum reserves are to be constructed. That is why the central government has chosen this location. The cave construction 
work has been entrusted to EIL, that is Engineers India Limited. This is how the salt caves look like, beneath Rajasthan. Then we have Samarth campaign, which was launched by Ministry of Rural Development uh, to promote digital transactions in more than 56,000 village panchayat. My dear, in May, uh, sorry, in May 2023, the Union Minister of Rural Development and Panchayati Raj, Mr. Giriraj Singh uh, uh, and the uh, and the UP Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath has launched this campaign at an event which was held in Lucknow. This is uh, the ceremony of Samarth campaign. However, the central government has uh, had already announced the initiation of this campaign back in February 2023. Uh, it is about spreading the digital literacy about the digital transaction. So the awareness is about digital banking transactions all around the country, especially uh, catering to the needs of village panchayats. Then we have Maharashtra government, which has launched the Sahashan Apalyadari initiative to bring government schemes and services. The Maharashtra government under the leadership of Chief Minister Eknath Shinde is set to launch this new initiative called uh, Sahasan Apal, uh, sorry, Apalya De, uh, sorry, Sahasan Apalya Dari means government at your doorstep. The primary objective of this initiative is to provide citizens with the easy access to government schemes and documents all in one place. The district administration have been directed to organize two day camps in their respective areas to facilitate the distribution of benefits to approximately 75,000 locals. This is a uh, we are having Mr. Eknath Shinde, the CM and the Deputy CM from BJP, Devendra Faddamis. Then we have scientists uh, uh, who have found the first ever genetic detection of wolf-dog hybridization. Uh, according to researchers, the wolf means uh, who's, uh, I would say, I think this is the scientific name of the wolf that is Canis lupus. The dog hybridization can cause a decline in wolf population. The researchers pressed the need to upscale the conserve, uh, sorry, upscale the conservation efforts through tracking, monitoring, and assessing the prey base. Then we have City of Dead, which is a UNESCO's World Heritage Site, which is a seven-kilometer long site situated in Egypt. It is a series of vast Islamic era uh, necropolises and the cemeteries in Cairo as a part of government initiative. Authorities are digging their way to this site for a highway project. My dear, several historians and volunteers have come together to stop the historic site demolition. Guys, if you are liking the video, then please, it is my humble request to kindly subscribe the channel, give thumbs up to the video, and also share it with as many friends as possible. This is the city of dead in Egypt. Then we have patch reporting app launch to make the roads in the state free of potholes. Uh, the patch reporting app was recently launched by Uttarakhand chief minister to make the roads free of potholes in the state. We know that in India, many, the many people, they lost their lives every year, you know, just because of road accidents in order to cover them, in order to contain them and stop them. We have now for the first time in the state of Uttarakhand, some kind of a pothole policy in order to fill them up and make the roads pot free, sorry, potholes free. It was developed by the state's PWD department. This app allows any person to submit a detailed complaint by capturing pictures of the potholes on the nearby roads. And then the PWD department of Uttarakhand will uh, address that problem and will try to make that road pot free, sorry, pothole free as soon as possible. This is, we have Pushkar Singh Dhami of Uttarakhand government deciding about the issue. Then we have Riverine based religious tourism circuit. Uh, for this, uh, MOU uh, has been recently signed uh, and it will enable the establishment of a contemporary ferry service, my dear, following a hop-on, hop-off model that will connect seven significant religious sites located near Guwahati of Assam. This is the riverine-based tourism circuit and we already know that uh, some kind of a Ganga Sagar ship, uh, if I'm not wrong, has been started by Prime Minister Modi which is a kind of a cruise service uh, which will go from Varanasi, will cross Bangladesh and will reach up to Assam, up till Assam. <clears throat> so these are the seven temples, which are seven sites, which are uh, going to be connected with this riverine circuit. Then we have Kerala, which has become India's first fully e-governed state, achieving the total e-governance. 
and it has made the history by declaring itself as the country's first total e-governed state, building upon its reputation as the first fully literate state in India uh, some days ago. Kerala has achieved this milestone through a series of policy initiatives aimed at transforming the state into a digitally empowered society. This is the CM of Kerala. With a focus on knowledge-based economy and 100% digital literacy, the government has digitalized the delivery of vital services across various domains, ensuring transparency, inclusivity, and accessibility for all the citizens. So this is something important. Uh, Mr. Georgi Gospodinov, who has uh, won the International Booker Prize uh, for the novel that is Time Shelter, which has been translated by Angela Rodal. Uh, they have secured the prestigious 2023 International Booker Prize. And this remarkable achievement marks the first time a Bulgarian novel has been awarded this renowned literary honor. In the next uh, picture, we have Mr. Georgi Gospodinov, along with the translator, Ms. Uh, Madam Angela, uh, sorry, I forgot, uh, Madam Angela Rodal. Then we have R. N. J. Prakash, who has been re-elected as the president of Swimming Federation of India. Yes, my dear. So R. N. J. Prakash and uh, uh, Monal D. Choksi were re-elected as president and secretary, uh, respectively, of the Swimming Federation of India. At, uh, at its journal annual journal body meeting. The target activities of Swimming Federation of India for the next four years will be to develop grassroots participation by holding camps and coaches clinics at the state level. The Jay Prakash was elected anonymously as the president of this prestigious organization in the annual journal body meeting and the election held on Sunday in Chennai. Then we have Hari Budh Magar, a double amputee ex-British Gorkha soldier from Nepal who has scaled the Mount Everest with the prosthetic legs. My dear, he has scaled the Mount Everest with the prosthetic uh, legs, means these legs are not the real leg, uh, sorry, real legs. Hari Budh Magar, a double amputee ex-British Gorkha soldier from Nepal, scaled the Mount Everest with the prosthetic legs. He joined the British Gorkhas in 1999. Something about the Gorkha regiment, my dear, these Gorkhas are very fearless. And whenever I remember about Gorkhas, I always remember about what Manik Shaw said about Gorkhas. Uh, he said that if ever you say that I'm not afraid of death, it means you are lying or it means you are a Gorkha. So Gorkha right now or presently they are serving in three armies, the armies of Nepal. Apart from Nepal, we have Britain. And after Britain, we have India. But because of Agni, Agni Veer policy, this time for this year, we don't have any recruitments about the Gorkha soldiers. And we have also studied it in some of the newspapers that uh, Indian government is not recruiting or we are not having the recruiting camps for the Gorkha soldiers this year. This is the reason why the Chinese are approaching Gorkhas. So the Magar lost both his legs when he stepped on <clears throat> an improvised explosive device planted by Taliban during a mission in Afghanistan 2010. This is uh, Hari Budh Magar who has uh, scaled the Mount Everest with the prosthetic legs. The Magar participated in para, uh, Paralympic sporting activities to raise awareness about the disability. In the past decade, he accomplished numerous mountaineering feats including the ascents of Ben Nevis, Mount Blanc, Kilimanjaro, uh, Mira Peak, and the Mount Mount Popkal. So these are the heights written. Something about Mount Everest. Then on May 29, 1953, Edmund Hillary of New Zealand and Tenzing Norgay Sherpa, an Indian citizen of Nepali origin, climbed Mount Everest for the first time. Junko Tabi uh, from Japan is the first woman to reach the summit of Mount Everest, as well as the first woman to climb the highest peak on each of the seven continents. But Chendri Pal uh, is the first Indian woman to climb Mount Everest. Something has been written about Chendri Pal, I think in the EVS books of class uh, fourth or fifth, if I'm not wrong. Santosh Yadav is the first Indian woman to climb Mount Everest twice in a row. Then we have something about Nepal. The kingdom of Nepal was established by Shah dynasty. It is a landlocked country in South Asia. Prime Minister is Pushpakamal Dehel Prachand, who was recently in India on a state visit. 
President is Ram Chandra Powdell, and he was elected in the month of May. We have uh, covered our news about him. Capital is Kathmandu, currency is Nepali rupee. Then we have Neera Chopra, uh, who has, uh, you know, who has won uh, the men, uh, I would say Neera Chopra, who's a Tokyo Olympic gold medalist, has climbed, or oh, sorry, has claimed number one ranking in the men's javelin throw for the first time. It's a proud moment for all Indians. Neera Chopra has topped the charts with 1455 uh, points, 22 ahead of uh, um, Grinda, sorry, Greenida Anderson Peters. On 30th August 2022, the Indian javelin throw ace rose to world number two, but was stuck behind Peters, the reigning world champion since then. But now we have Neera Chopra, world number one. Yes, this is Neera Chopra, the proud of India. Then we have Saurabh uh, Ganguly, who has been named as a brand ambassador for the Tripura tourism. Tripura, something about it, then it is divided into eight districts, 23 subdivisions, and Agartala is the state capital and also the largest city of Tripura. It has 19 different tribal communities with a majority of Bengali population. Bengali, English, Kogborok are the official languages of the state. Very important. Uh, somewhat, uh, the question can be asked about the official language, my dear. This can be a probable question as far as your polity is concerned. You should be aware about the official languages of, of all the 28 states and eight union territories. Tripura became a full-fledged Indian state only in 1972, and only one major highway, that is National Highway Number 8, connects it to the rest of the country. Uh, this is Saurabh Ganguly becoming the ambassador of Tripura tourism. Then we have capital Agartala. Governor is Dr. Manik Shah. Uh, Chief Minister is Satyadev Narayan Arya. And the Tourism Minister is Shushan Chaudhary. Then we have World Turtle Day celebrated on 22nd of May. Theme is I Love Turtles. This day is celebrated to raise awareness among the people to protect turtles and their endangered habitats across the world. Then we have the highest honor, that is the Grand Companion of the Order, has been given to our Prime Minister Narendra Modi when he was, uh, like when he was visiting uh, the FIPIC countries meeting, which is a group of 14 countries established by India in the year 2014 only. So, Governor General Sir Bob Dada of Papua New Guinea honored our Prime Minister with a Grand Companion of the Order, which is the highest, uh, I would say, honor in this nation. On 22nd of May 2023, when Prime Minister Narendra Modi, he left, completed the G7 summit, which was being organized in Hiroshima. And then he left for Papua New Guinea, where he met all the 14 countries head uh, when he was attending the FIPIC countries meeting. Then we have something about the Papua New Guinea. It is a country located in the north of Australia in the southern Pacific Ocean. It shares the land border with Indonesia. Prime Minister is James Marape, who has won recently the hearts of many Indians. First of all, something about Papua New Guinea. My dear, this nation has never welcomed a delegate in, means, uh, in the evening. But this is the first time when this nation broke all the traditions our Prime Minister and even the Prime Minister James Marape touched the feet of Prime Minister Modi, which has won the hearts of many Indians. Capital port means the capital is Port uh, Morris Bay. Currency is Papua New Guinea. Kina. Population is approximately 70 lakh. Then we have Fiji's highest honor that companion of the order of Fiji has also been given to Narendra Modi. Uh, with highest respect for his country, Prime Minister Modi said this uh, honor belongs to all the people of India, but not to the Prime Minister. What about Fiji? It is also a country located in South, South Pacific Ocean. Capital is Suva. President is William. Prime Minister is Siti Vini Rabuka. We have already covered a news about Siti Vini Rabuka in the last month's uh, third edition, I think. Official language is English, Fijian and Hindi. Currency is Fijian dollar. And we have country who has declared the year 2025 as a special tourism year, uh, that is Nepal. President uh, Ram Chandra Paudal announced it during a joint session of Nepali parliament. According to it, the decade of 2080 will be recognized as the uh, visit Nepal decade. And 2025 will be a special year for tourism for Nepal. In recent years, Nepal has experienced a decline in tourism due to the impact of COVID-19, although there has been an increase now and the place, but the pace is slow. So in order to fasten up the pace of tourism, this step has been taken. 
tourism is a very significant source of the foreign currency in nepal and about the gdp of nepal means about 30 to 40% gdp of nepal is directly dependent over tourism then we have the international biodiversity day which is observed on 22nd of may every year on 22nd may we celebrate this day to increase the understanding and to encourage the preservations of earth diverse sorry diverse ecosystem what is the theme theme is from agreement to action build back biodiversity and also my dear this is the end of this bulletin and guys if you like the video then it is just my humble request kindly don't go don't exit the video without liking it share it with your friends and also subscribe the channel that whenever my video will be posted it will reach to my listeners instantly so this is uh, actually this gives me some kind of enthusiasm some kind of fuel to keep on giving you such content which is very important as far as a government examination is concerned so from my side we'll see you in the next video tata bye bye thank you and all the very best for your government preparation thank you guys